Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Mantic Games, and this is the first video in a series where we go behind the scenes and take a look at some of the design work that goes into the Twilight Kin. That takes you from concept all the way to model render as we get ready to head into the launch of this brand new faction where we've taken a twist on a loved trope and turned it on its head into something that's truly Mantic and fits the world of Panathor. The Twilight Kin are a faction that is steeped in some pretty evil and twisted dark magics. And when looking at uh, designing you know, new models and units for the faction, we had to get a sort of base concept and define a set of rules that would apply all across the rest of the range. And we knew from a story point of view, we wanted to bring them from a place called the Void. And in there is essentially where the Night Stalkers dwell, other various creatures that uh, have not been named. And they found a way through their time there to sail through it and to navigate it in very particular ways that uh, have allowed them over time to dominate the Night Stalkers and really actually use them and bend them to their will. So much of what you see with the Night Stalkers in Panathor is, is actually under the influence of, of the Twilight Kin. And uh, from a design standpoint, we really wanted to have the motif of the void being a place and a thing that would carry through the units uh, visually and design wise, that you would see corruption in their forms. And it would be very important to kind of capture that all across any of the designs and models that we did. We had some key concepts of what we knew the Twilight Kin would do well and ideas of how the list would work, but it was still really early in the process and we were working on Dungeon Saga Origins and we needed some Twilight Kin concept for that. And in those sketches, I, I just remember being absolutely blown away when I saw the Twilight Kin Impaler. Uh, the amount of excitement that hit me just because I felt like this is it. This is actually you know, the design that really captures how I felt the Twilight Kin should look visually. And it, we, we took elements from that and what broke it down into what worked and what was the thing that was making sense and it was it was the heavy armor and the corruption uh, elements like that. We, we knew that from the story standpoint we wanted the Twilight Kin to be uh, coming from the place of the void where there was tons of corruption. You know they were they were coming and, and actually manipulating the Night Stalkers. It was, it was a domination thing not necessarily working with them or in unison with them. The Twilight Kin were actually had found a way to get into the void uh, through you know very twisted magics that once they were there they established a place of control over the Night Stalkers and the power that they were able to draw from the void really you know elevated them to a place where we hadn't seen before as far as you know lore and story goes and certain you know units or, or aspects could be represented well by being injected with his power and that took us to a place where we thought you know what if what if the males were you know more easily corrupted and some of them didn't have the mental will to control the power and, and corruption that they were being exposed to and so you know there, you'd have these males that were completely mutated and crazy possessed by the night stalker spirits and then you'd have females that were more resistant to it and something in their you know uh, genealogy anatomy whatever made them more resistant to their time in the void so they were uh, more elf-like in their form, while the Twilight Kin males would be more bestial and, and, and sort of corrupted and mutated. And that Impaler concept that was in Dungeon Saga Origins was just perfect for that. It, it really captured exactly what we were looking to achieve. And it became sort of the starting point for where we went with it from there. At that point, we just had concept from Dungeon Saga Origins, but it had to translate into, you know, a hard plastic frame for Kings of War. And how would we do that? Uh, we, we wanted a large infantry size on these guys because they were supposed to be just completely engorged with that power and, I mean, double the height of what an elf would be. Really, you know, intimidating presence uh, kind, of, kind of creatures. And there would be this uncertainty of whether there was actually an elf in the armor or if it was just an elf that had been completely engorged and grown and was this tall, lanky, kind of crazy uh, mutant shape. And we, we got some concept back for the, uh, you know, early impalers and what we would do in hard plastic. And I remember seeing them and, and thinking, you know, I liked that they had this sort of dark, dark night appeal, but they felt a little too human to me. Their, their, their helmets and their armor details were, you know, more on the side of 
it just seeing, you know, a knight in armor that had just some, you know, darker elements to it. And it didn't feel right for Twilight Kin. And we, we kept looking at it and trying to figure out what we could do, if we could add some more kind of twisted bits in their helmets and, and maybe some, you know, arms and weird stuff. And I remember sitting in a meeting with Ronnie Renton and uh, him saying, guys, you won already. You, 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 you had the design right in the Dungeon Saga Origins, so just go back to that and uh, make those things, you know, in, into the right unit. So uh, we were doing work that we didn't necessarily need to be doing because we really did have the winning combination right off the bat with that uh, early concept in Dungeon Saga Origins. People seemed to be very receptive of it and excited, and it kind of became the poster board for what the entire range would look like. From there, we moved into some more uh, streamlined designs where we took the things that worked, that tall tower shield, uh, a large one-handed weapon, but something that could be you know, fielded in a board and sword sort of style. Uh, lots of elements of corruption, lots of size and intimidating presence, and incorporating sort of that lower cloak on the body and, and elements like that. So uh, one of the things that I loved was the hands on the helmet. So we want to make sure that we had some more uh, you know, nods to that original design from Dungeon Saga Origins in there. Um, that meant, you know, alternate heads that would show helmets that had, you know, fingers crawling through eye sockets, all kinds of crazy things that felt corrupted and appropriately nasty. Um, Ronnie really wanted these guys to be the sort of poster boys for the faction, and, and, and they were quickly becoming that. So we knew that uh, we had to get this one right, and it spent, uh, you know, hours and hours talking to Dave and, and Luigi, our sculptor, who would go back and forth and we'd find the right tweaks and we got the posing rights and made sure that everything fit on the bases, that sort of thing. So you go through a lot of iterations and things that you don't necessarily think about. We look at you know ease of painting, minimizing straps, as you guys uh, so lovingly like to let us know that we have too many of. Uh, there's so many fun things that go into it, but we really got to a place where the, the second round of concepts became what we were looking for. And then, you know, Luigi was cracking away right off the bat um, with some just absolute home run sculpts. And we got the Impalers to this place where they felt really intimidating, really powerful. Uh, and they, the rules almost writ themselves from there. So uh, we, we were putting the design and rule philosophies together into a great place. And I think that uh, where we ended up is exactly where we needed them to be. With the Impalers, we also had the Soulbane, which uh, came from Dungeon Saga Origins, and it fit right in. Uh, it was already scaled the right size of what we needed, and that was really important. Uh, it had this super intimidating presence, and you know, I remember one of the things that we changed in the process was that at, at first it had uh, sort of an axe that was sticking out way over the base, and so we have to, you know, be considerate of King's War players and how important overhang is. So we had to redesign it. We, it was on a you know, circle for Dungeon Saga Origins. You wanted to be able to put that on a square and then make sure that the overhang uh, doesn't you know, clip other models and make things difficult to play with. So the, the finalized model is one where the stance is you know, just kind of off to the side with the axes and it, and it works really well. So I think that we ended up in a, a very good place for it. It's a really intimidating piece and we wanted it to work with the Impalers in unison. So. Uh, same kind of size. They're they're really really good on the tabletop. I think that uh, people will be really impressed at how much of a blender this thing is. Uh, he doesn't have a shield though, so he's uh, slightly you know less defensive than the actual impalers. But uh, he he can put out a world of hurt and obviously inspires the things around them and works really well in synergy with the impalers in general. So. Uh, great, great hero piece, and uh, the other hero piece that uh, goes with the Impalers we'll be showing off in a later video to wrap things up. There's so much that goes into designing uh, new units and models, and I really wanted to be a part of this one. Twilight Kin are very close to my love in the fantasy space, and I knew that uh, getting the opportunity to do this was, you know, really special. I've been a part of the sales team at Mantic and stepping into a role where I can do some design stuff with the studio is, has been a dream come true. So uh, the concept artist all the way through studio meetings and you know background and lore, working with Clint to develop everything and then finding a way to tie it all together along with the rules committee and rules. I feel like we've, we've never really hit as many beats so perfectly where all these things come together and actually inspire each other and work together to create a functioning product uh, that gives you an entire experience. And we're gonna tie it all together in the Shadow of Horizons campaign that's coming up in September. So uh, I cannot wait to show you more. There's so much more that we're gonna get into 
uh, all the core units, all the hard plastics that we're coming out with with this faction. Uh, it, it's just a great time to be a Kings of War fan and I think that it's going to show you the kind of commitment to quality that we're putting forward with the designs and everything that we do moving on from here. So uh, stay tuned, there's, there's tons of, of more videos to come and even more previews. We'll even get into some rules, which is what I know you guys love, but uh, you're, you're going to love this faction, I promise. Thanks guys.